Gela Castachla, Nadla Mute, Nugo and Mundly Ducks, I mean Gayu Glassy, the Montagila Gula Flowages. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mundly Ducks, which translates into uh, the person who loves to give a feast. And I come from the Montagila, that's my father's tribe. Uh, Montagila means growling bear or stubborn people. And my mother is from the Thawichis nation, which translates into angry people or powerful people. So that is where I am from, from the Kwakwakiwag nation. When I was six years old, we had moved to Alert Bay and uh, people were slowly starting to bring their regalia back because of the potlatch ban. And my mother brought me to my grandmother and a great, great aunt on a Sunday and I became the threader. I sorted out the buttons and I cut out the designs for them. So this was the beginnings of my learning textile work at the age of six in Alert Bay. And then from there, I watched my grandmother, my mother's mother, watch her make regalia for us because my grandfather was a hereditary chief of the Thawichis nation and his name was Chief Henry Speck and his potlatch, his chief's name was Uji's Talis, which means the greatest. So with watching that, um, I didn't realize I was learning when my mother would bring me on a Sunday because at, a six, at six years old, I would rather be playing out with my relatives, wondering what, what they were playing and where they were. And here I am with these elderly ladies, right? And I'm really grateful for that teaching because when I started doing this, um, my mother passed away. It was 30 years ago that she passed away. And this is how I got full, fully engaged with working with textiles. Um, we had discussed putting um, a set of regalia for each of her children and me being one of them. And there was 10 of us left. So when she passed into the spirit world, um, I told John, I'm going to take over. I'm going to do exactly what Mama and I had planned. So we started buying material and we worked with Melton because Melton was the trade material when the ships came in in the 1800s to trade with our people. John had it, had it in his mind that we should stick to Melton because that's what our people used. So we did that and then we really searched around for uh, shell buttons, mother of pearl, abalone, and um, for my family. So John became the main designer of everything that we have created over the years. He, we made templates, which made it easier for me. So there were times where John knew that I would be behind on certain things and John would stop his carving and he would come out and help me cut out designs. And when I got to that stage of sewing the designs down, there were times he would come back in when I got to the button stage and he would line up the buttons for me. And if you look at any of my blankets, I have no knots in the back. I put the knots underneath the button. And it really uh, amazed people because, uh, like, how did she do this? Like, where are the knots? Like, they never even thought to think it's under the button. John figured this out for us. Um, we're really quite sure of the dimensions of what the blanket size should should be. So he got up late one night and went into our treasure box and we had an old blanket that was probably from the early 1900s. Then my mother's blanket and my grandmother's blanket. He laid them all out and measured it. And then he had that aha moment. Now I know the shortcut that we could do. So to construct a blanket, you, you're literally wearing the longhouse. And the crest that you see on the back, people can tell where you're from. Like when they see butterfly online, 
they know that I'm from the Salvages. So people can tell which tribe you're from by, by the crest that you wear. And if I wore my kulus, they know I'm from the Muntagila and it's from my father. So we're, we really protect our crests because there are some people that, well, they think they can use it, but um, don't really have the rights to. So, you know, there are a lot of rules within our potlatch world of being, keeping things alive and protecting what should be protected. With a button blanket, like I said, you were, your lo you were the longhouse. Um, the border, that represents the planks that of the construction of the longhouse. So when you go in a longhouse and you see those long planks around the longhouse. And the, of course you've got the fire. And if you see any kind of plaid or um, solid material up here on your blanket, that represents the smoke hole. What my grandmother told me about the smoke hole is for your MC and your singers, the people that have to work on the floor, the smoke should go through the smoke hole so that they can continue to do their business. And the body of the blanket, some people call it the door or the longhouse itself. So I, I really think that's quite ingenious of our people to think that. And my other thought, um, looking at one of the blankets I got from my grandmother years ago, it made me think of my grandmother's youth of how they worked in the longhouse, sat on the floor and started working on their blankets, whatever regalia that they needed to do you know, in the dark, and um, once I started, you know, going going forward to this generation, we have the sewing machine, we have exacto blades, we have the roller blades, and we sew the design down by machine instead of by hand, like what she had done. And when I started, I wanted to do something like that, because it reminded me of Granny. So with my father's blanket that uh, I had asked for him, from him, so that I could put a design on, and this was right after our mother passed away. Um, our tradition is, you know, to burn, so that when they go into the spirit world, they're not going naked, and they, they have what they need on their next journey. So when the, that blanket came out, um, I asked Dad, you know, could I please keep these blankets and I'll put designs on them. So I made one for him and one for the youngest brother because um, I just thought it was befitting that it went from Dad to the youngest. So that's when I started to learn to bead. And it's called couching because it's so close to the design. And I use size 10 and I used Czechoslovakian beads. Um, I couldn't figure out how to do it because I didn't see Granny work with it, but I had that aha moment late one night, looked at that blanket and I said, Gran, you gotta help me here and I'm going to say it in our language. Ad, giwala la gachen, a rastan kin kotle, kuskugi la sos, la kus. I said, Gwen, I need your help. Could you show me how you did this? And that's when I had that aha moment. And it was really touching. And you know, this was like midnight. And I sat down and she worked with two threads. This is your bead line. You put all your beads on this line. And then this is your sewing needle. Pick up two go down, come up, pick up two, go down, come up, and every once in a while, the further that you go along, you pull on this a little bit and it straightens it out. And I was like a little kid, I was so excited, like, thank you, Granny, thank you, Ada, you know? So she was still with me, you know, she still guides me. So John, John has been a big factor of all of us. I, I wouldn't be, 
I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for us working together and the drive that he had for me. You know, he really opened up my eyes of the quality that you should put in your piece. So I would always um, be so happy for him and, you know, I had so much uh, pride in everything that John had done and he really didn't like the recognition. Like he said, no, no, there, there, there's no need for that. So it'll always be with me, you know, um, you know, it's such an honourable thing what you guys are doing for him, you know, lifting him up and um, the sense of pride that we all have with what's happening, you know. I know he would say it's really not necessary, but I'm really happy about it. You know, it's um, so enlightening for me. Um, life is really interesting, you know, what John and I had done in the 34 years that we were together. And um, I wouldn't trade it for anything, you know. Um, we, we were very compatible, not just in the artistic world, but in everything that we, like we could finish off each other's sentences. Or we would say, let's go out for dinner at the same time. You know, that's how connected we were. You know, and I, I think that's really important in a relationship when you can get to that level of being as one, you know, and not, not too many people can reach that, I think. But, you know, it, it's all about just working together and just being honest with each other. We all have a gift of what we do to keep our culture alive, and mine is textiles. Mine's working with my hands. And that's something that I learned from my mother at a young age. You know, when I look back at it, she was already teaching me, you know, the values of life and what what is ahead of me. And that, and you know, working with my hands a lot with sewing, you know, it never stops. It never stops. Like in my studio, I look around and I know what. I would like to get accomplished this week, you know, like, okay, this weekend I am going to work on borders on two blankets, at least get the buttons on. What you choose to do with your life is really important and, you know, you got to enjoy what you do. So I'm, I'm very um, grateful to my parents and my grandmother for teaching, speaking that language to me, you know. You know, I'm really grateful that you have invited me here to say a few words of what John and I have done together. My heart is very grateful for that. And Oatmeal skins, oatmeal skins, hot and lad. We're going to continue to do this. We're going to continue to do this. So that everything is kept alive. You know, and, and that's the language that we need to put out there. You know, not just sharing and caring, but to, to teach it, to be humble and do it with dignity.